Oh, good morning. Everything is so sticky in here, Dee. Why is it so humid in Wisconsin? Oh, I know, man. What do you do? Oh, it's not my fault, man. Oh, and you got stuff on your lens, too. Oh, oh I'll clean it out for the next clip. So, welcome to Black River Falls, Wisconsin, guys. We're at the Flying J, popular stop for us. This is usually our first stop on every trip because it's pretty much exactly 10 hours from home. And this Please is a drive good stop. To highlighted route. Excuse me. Excuse me. Mandy, first thing this morning is just, it's just not a good time. Not a good time, man. Oh, okay, so we just woke up, as you can tell, about like 10 seconds ago. Turning everything on, checking everything. We're gonna go do our pre-trip. And we're gonna go inside, we're gonna get a quick something to eat that we can eat on the go. Oh, we gotta go to Walmart. Oh, shoot. That's right. Hold on, we're gonna go to run over to Walmart right now. I'm not even gonna run in here and get anything to eat. I'm just gonna go get something at Walmart real quick. All right, Diesel, you ready to go to Walmart, man? You ready to go to Walmart? Okay, let's go to Walmart. So yeah, Walmart's right here, pretty much right across the street from Flying J in Black River Falls. For like two years of me coming through here, I didn't even know that. I went to the fuel desk in Flying J one day, I'm like, where's the nearest Walmart? <laughs> oh, the cashier stares at me for a few seconds. Looks across the road. <laughs> Good old Walmart over there. We had to park a mile away because no one likes truckers near the building. Oh well, it's not like they need us to, you know, stock their shelves or anything, you know, and keep them sorry. Oh well. <laughs> so we are going to leave Black River Falls now. We're going to hit the I-94 eastbound, which is currently going south, but it's an eastbound freeway. We're going to go right past Chicago through Indiana. Same thing as I was talking about yesterday. What's going on over here, Diesel? What are you doing? Squirmy, squirmy, squirmy. Turn the camera on, you won't stop squirming. Now we stopped. <laughs> Sit still. Child. All right, so let's hit the freeway. We need to get going, we need to get going now. Flying J South Beloit. I'm getting me some good, good juice. I'm at about a half a tank. This is where I usually fuel because there's not another Flying J until you get past Chicago into Gary, Indiana. I don't think so, anyways. I think there's a TA, but. Oh, and it's busy. It is busy, 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 busy. I wonder how much fuel these guys go through in a day. Look at all these trucks fueling up. Crazy. I think I saw an open lane over here. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. Yeah, there it is. Why has no one seen this one? Alright, well, here we go. Nice. Alright, JR, you better not hold me up here for half an hour after I'm done fueling. Oh, feels good, feels good. Diesel, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, man, thanks. It's getting hot, man. We haven't even gone that far south yet and it's already hot, hot, hot. Figure might as well check the oil while we're here getting fuel. Let's see how our oil's doing. Pull it up a bit. I usually check the oil at every fuel stop. Every morning and at every fuel stop, so twice a day I check the oil. Yeah, we're still good. A little low. 
but we're just above the line there still. So I'll need to keep a pulse eye on that in the next couple of days. Come with me. Everything underneath here looks nice. I want to show you the new tie rod that I got. Uh, the new tie rod is back here. See it? it goes all the way, way over there. That's the new thing that I got. Everything looks good here. We're not leaking any oil. No oil's dripping. Exactly 117 U.S. gallons, just under 440 U.S. dollars. And the price we paid was actually 375.9 a gallon, which is super cheap, super cheap, people. Uh, so that was one day of driving, pretty much exactly one day of driving from Grand Forks, North Dakota to here, I would say that'd be about a thousand kilometers, maybe a little over, maybe around 1200 kilometers, six to 700 miles, somewhere in there. And uh, yeah, that's one day of driving, 440 bucks. That's a cheap day of driving it too, that's some cheap fuel. You see that little, like, those little bars in the front of that blue truck there? What does that serve? Like, what purpose does that serve? That's not gonna stop any wildlife. Just curious, you know. Zoom you out here. I see so many of little tiny little bumpers like that in the States here. I have nothing against them. I'm sure they serve some purpose, but obviously not for wildlife or any collisions or, like, I mean, you sit on that thing and it'll bend. That's what it looks like. You hit a deer with that, that's gonna cause more damage than if you had nothing at all, because that's gonna bend back, rip apart your whole bumper, and they're gonna have to replace that and all the stuff that you broke on your truck. So really, I don't see the point of it. It's just me. Oh, Chicago, you never change. You always stay the same. At least they're consistent. Right? I've seen so many dangerous passes and dangerous cutoffs already. That's why I'm leaving this big gap in between me and that fancy uh, Cadillac in front of me there. Guaranteed someone's gonna cut me off yet, so I'm prepared. Drive 3.4 kilometers. Then exit right by 294. Are you kidding, Mandy? I gotta get in the right lane now? Oh, man. That'll be fun. Yeah, so far I've been lucky. Uh, no one's been very uh, dirty to me. But, oh, I've seen a couple of other truckers just about plow into some cars that cut them off already. Oh, like I'm heavy right now, too. I'm sitting at a gross weight of about 80,000 pounds, like fully loaded. It'll take me a full American football field to stop. I'm gonna see if there's gonna be anyone who's gonna cut in front of me yet. Not even. Wow, what a smooth one exit. Kilometer. Keep left onto I-294 South. Now, since for the past three times that I've been trying to show you how difficult this exit is and how we get cut off, no one's been cutting me off, so kind of look like a little bit of a storyteller now, don't I? Oh, well. You'll just have to trust me. Somebody from this area can back me up and say how crazy it is exiting off that exit most times. <laughs> I just, however, can't seem to uh, catch it on camera. Whatever, that's, that's what happens, right? You turn on a camera and everything works just perfect. If you ever want to get through Chicago with absolutely no problems, just film the whole thing. Put a dash camera on there, nothing will happen. As soon as you turn that dash camera off, oh, that's when everything happens. Just so you know. Just so you know, that's how it happens.
All right, now to get into that left lane there, or the lane left of this one. Keep left onto I-294 South. I know, Mandy, it's easier said than done. Oh, look at that, people are leaving room for me. See what I mean? As soon as you turn a camera on, everybody's nice, because they see the camera there, right? They don't want to do anything stupid when there's a camera. Interesting. Interesting. Here at the Flying J in Hebron, Indiana. I parked all by myself way back there. Cause I'm a loner. Actually because I wanted to walk Diesel in the grass over there. But when I was just about to take him out, some other driver came with his dog and just hung around there for like 15 minutes and wouldn't leave. So Diesel was going nuts. So now I gotta wait for Diesel to forget that there was a dog there. Then I can take him out. Then he'll probably sniff him and go crazy anyways. Hey, I remember there was a dog here. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if you can see the sign out there. This is Flying J. This is a pretty big one, actually. Well, everything's pretty big out here because we're near Chicago, so there's so much traffic. But I want to show you guys something. I want to show you guys something. Remember how I told you guys, make sure you're not taking up two spots? And this here? That's what I mean. Just pull forward a little further and just take up one spot. That's the professional thing to do. At least for night. Now it doesn't really matter because now there's so many empty spots, people can just pick a different one. But once nighttime comes around, we need all the spots we can get. Mm. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. I didn't know this. I didn't know it was Driver Appreciation Month. What does that mean? She means free hot dogs. But I had to pay for these. I got some pizza too. Because I'm getting fat today. I know. What? I was craving them, so I went and I got them. I don't do this every day, for every meal, all the time. That's my truck. AKA my wife. Ha, I fooled you, you all thought I was single. Nope, there's the old lady right there. She just got a facelift too, among other things. Looking good, honey. Looking good. Hard to get past people sometimes because there's so much traffic. Like all of this traffic that's filling up three lanes is gonna be squished down in about five, 10 minutes. But, oh well, at least we're prepared for it, right? Hello. Diesel, where are we? I don't know, man. I've never been to this place before. Kind of creepy. It is kind of creepy. All the good truck stops were full. I shouldn't say the good ones. All the, you know, main ones were full. So we went on our app on our phone, our fancy, fancy phone, and we found 
96 truck stop. It's on exit 96, I-64, Kentucky. How many of you have heard of this place before? It's kind of a little bit of a, a maze to get here. But here we are, and like, there's a whole pile of trucks here and everything. It's a big truck stop. You can, you can probably fit about 75 to 100 trucks in here, if everyone would park properly, but it's a gravel parking lot, which means that there's no lines. Which means that everybody just sort of parks however they want. And like this guy who's got like half his trailer up on a bump. See that? How crooked that is? <laughs> oh, well, as long as the truck is straight, right? When I parked, I sort of felt like my truck was leaning towards the driver's side. And I don't like that. Because then I gotta put my feet on the side that uh, my feet usually are at. Or what did I say? My head. Where my feet usually are, right? And I don't like doing that because that's where my feet belong. I don't want to put my face all over where my feet have been. This is weird. I like having my head on the same side every time. That's a, I always have my head on the driver's side, right? So when you park on the side of the road, usually your truck is leaning towards the passenger side. Because you never want to have your head on the low part. Because then all the blood runs to your head and then... And you get a headache. You wake up with a headache. Look at this. Somebody just unloaded their entire trailer here. And just dumped it here. Just like right out of their trailer. Just right there. Whatever. Over there too, you see it? I don't understand, guys. Why do truckers do that? Why do you empty out your junk out the back of your trailer at the truck stop? You're ruining it for the rest of us. Anyways, guys. I've got so much filming done today. I'll probably have to cut out a whole pile already. But guys, you know what to do. Hit that like button for me if you like the video. Helps me out a lot. Makes me feel good. Makes me want to make another video. And it shows me that you guys are watching and, and liking. Makes sense. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. 4 a.m. Central Time. Right here. Go down below to the description to see more videos from the past all the way up to a year ago.